a little bit separate. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Few months on the job now. What's your experience been like recruiting as a member of the Ducks? Oh, it's been great. You know. Um, just being here, being connected with the staff, you know, some of the guys we've been able to recruit, I think we've been able to create some momentum both in 25 and 26. So it's been fun, man, just um, learning how they do things here, learning the, uh, just learning the landscape of, of the team, of Eugene, and just being able to share that with recruits has been awesome. I realize it's still five months of signing there, Chuck, but when you've been getting some of the recruiting wins you have geographically and against some of the teams and coaches that you've been getting, what does that feel like? Uh, I mean, it feels normal. I, th I think, I think that's what Dan expects of me. That's what I expect of myself. So, I mean, it's it's part of the job. That's what I came here to do to be able to sign some of these guys. You know, uh, bring in a different landscape, bring in guys from Texas, and win recruiting battles. It's a part of the job at this level, and it's an expectation for me. It's the standard for me. It's the standard that Dan expects from me. Is why he brought me here. You didn't recruit Dink, but he's now been here for a little bit. Can you give us a kind of a feel for that and maybe with the learning process when you? Guy, you don't maybe know a lot about when he arrives. Yeah, Dink's been awesome to work with, man. He's he's a sponge, so he spends extra time. He's the last one to leave every day. He's the first one in meetings. Um, he's asking questions. He's getting better every day. He's asking where can he get better. But what I'm impressed with it, with Dink for a young guy is his ability to communicate, his ability to talk about his weaknesses, where he needs to get better. Uh, it's been really impressive for him, and he's still got some growing to do, but but he's grown so far since he's been here. Dan called. Uh, Dan. Will calls Jaden uh, Lamar just a guy that people are sleeping on. What have you just seen from, from Jaden? Jaden's Mr. Consistent. Um, you know, he, he's a grown man. I know he's young. We were talking about it yesterday. He's young, but he has a process about everything he does. Um, he's very well thought out, he's very articulate in the film room. So I think you, you know what you get from that guy, and, and it's hard to count out a guy who's consistent, who shows up every day and works. You know what you're going to get from him. He finishes runs, he's tough. He can add some value in the third down game. So Jaden is a guy, you know, you, you keep your eye on. And as, as he continues to grow, as he, his game continues to grow, as it continues to slow down, you know, the sky's the limit for Jaden. What are you expecting out of Noah here before the season? In terms of, like, he'll be live on these Saturdays. Are you going to get him back into a yeah. game like scenarios, or is he going to be no contact until we get to the season? Yeah, I mean, he's been fine out there so far. Um, uh, I don't know if I can speak on whether he's going to be contact or no contact, but. For Noah, we talk about it all the time. It's, it's the mental process. Coming back from an injury, the most important part is the mental, right? I think he, I think he's back. I think he feels good. You know, he has some spurts where you can see some of that dynamic ability. Um, just getting over that mental block for him, which he's been working to get over, and he's been doing a great job. Today was one of his best days, um, catching a ball and running through contact and being able to do some different stuff. So, I'm excited to see Noah. You know, I told him when I got here, I was like. You know, you're the guy that I don't get to see every day. You're the guy that I always hear about, how explosive he is. I saw it on tape. So it's been fun, you know, watching him do it out on the practice field a little bit. You had an idea about what this room would be like when you took the job back in spring. Now that you've been here for a few months, has anything surprised you about the players in this room? No, I mean, the toughness these guys have, how these guys have taken to me, I've, I've really appreciated and how they've let me coach them, how coachable they've been. Um, I won't say it's a surprise, but it feels good when you walk into a room of guys who had a coach, you know, they had a really good connection with, and we're able to build a connection also, you know. So we stay out, we, we stay and go hang out after practice, whether it's going to eat and go get dinners, and they show me some places around town that they like to eat at. So it's been great, you know, the connection we've been able to have and establish together as a room. Um, that, that's that's been the fun part about this group. They're very open and they want to get better, man. They ask questions all the time. They ask about my experience in the league. They ask about what they can do to, you know, enhance their game. You know, they ask about taking notes. The the whole process. And it's impressive when you get a room full of guys that's that um, thoughtful about the process. Going off of that, just being a younger coach, being in charge of this room, a lot different than kind of what they had before, but still had a great connection with that. Um, other running backs coach, how would you describe your relationship being a little bit different with them being so young? Yeah, I mean, I don't see it as any different. I think leadership is ageless. So, you know, when I walk in that room, I command the room. They respect me. I have respect for them. Uh, you know, we, we, we talk at a level. Uh, when it comes to the game at a high level, I, I expect them to articulate at a high level. I expect to hold them to a standard every single day. Um, I expect them to do exactly what they're told to. And, I mean, that's the relationship we have in that room. And, you know, those guys have been able to um, embrace me as a coach. And I think my experience in the league, you know, kind of showed me that. When you get in the room, I got a chance to coach Malcolm Brown, who was a lot older than me. He was 30, actually, when I was a 28-year-old coach in the NFL and from Texas. And I got to watch him and, you know, 
having to lead that guy and you know I still have a relationship with him and he called me back and was like you know your leadership to me was invaluable and so um, uh, it's, it's no re different relationship we go in the room and we work. His puppy had a bit of a unique skill set or something. Who's the best receiver of this group? Because we haven't necessarily seen each of them in a game capacity in that way just because of what he did. So Yeah they all do different things you know um, you know Noah has a great feel for space um, he has a great feel for understanding how to run option routes. Jaden has a whole aspect of understanding when it comes to third down, when it comes to coverages, when it comes to zone. Jordan James is a hard person to tackle on the perimeter when he catches the ball. I mean, he's a little demon out there. So they all do different things in the pass game. The, the, the goal for us to round out our room, and that's one thing we talked about, me being a receiver coach, playing receiver, um, just becoming better pass catchers and overall receivers in the room. Jordan James had a rep today, and he immediately sprint off and was like, you know, we got to do some extra receiver drills. I want you to, you know, spend some extra time with me catching the ball, doing some receiver indie. So, you know, everybody brings a different aspect. I think we want to just round out the group where, you know, you look at all those guys and they can split out and be multifaceted backs. There's been a lot of praise outside the program about Jordan James. Yeah. Why do you feel like he's ready to be, I'm not saying he's going to be the starter, but that type of a role? Because he's never been running back one at the school. I think he's seen? determined, man. I mean, he's. He's confident, he walks out there with a chip on his shoulder, but at the same time, he's coachable, he's hungry. He doesn't turn anything down. And we got a couple guys in that room like that. The, the, the thing you want, you know, these days in a running back room is a stable of guys because, you know, you don't want a guy that you have to, the bell cow days are over in this game. You know, you need a, a room full of really good backs and that's that's what we're trying to establish. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And right now, I think I think we're working towards that when you say Noah, Jaden, Jay, all the guys we got in our room, I mean, that they're attacking the process, and I think we got a couple starting backs that they were on other teams. You know, they all start. Yeah. Can you talk about building out a stable. Do you have a target number of guys you want to incorporate in this season, or is it how does that work for you? Yeah, you want to have three or four guys. You want to have, you know, a couple. You want to have two first and second down backs essentially, right? You don't play them always like that. You want to have two guys that can be third down backs and understand the aspect of pass catching, how to um, pick up exotic blitzes, how to see the field. And, you know, you want three or four backs to be able to play, and, and right now we're working towards that. And I think by the time the season comes, we'll have three or four guys, if not more, that can come in and contribute and, and help this team. You think like that last question? Jay Harris's attributes. What, what's going to allow him going from D2 to, to D1 at this level? That's a big jump. Yeah. Um, it's funny because Jay, as of lately, and you know this whole fall camp, Jay Harris has become really selfish. I think he's selfless. He's, you know, kind of let his shell down. He's let his guard down with me spend a lot more time with me. He's starting to ask questions. He, he's really kind of, really trying to take the process by the horns, you know, and it's been showing on the field. Today was probably one of his better practices. So, you know, he got to attack the process and understand that the game's a little bit different, but at the end of the day, it's football. And, you know, as long as you understand your assignment, know what you're doing, and you can compete at the highest level, eventually you'll get to where you're supposed to be if you got the talent. Mm -hmm. It's just about that will and want to, and Jay has both. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Good. Appreciate y'all.